Good evening, everybody. We have a great show lined up for you tonight, a very exciting show lined up. We have Starbucks representative Rich Feller with us tonight to discuss a significant issue about the current situation with Starbucks and the IWW. Now, Starbucks, ranked near the top of Fortune Magazine's list of 100 best companies to work for in 2008, might not seem like an obvious candidate for a unit organizing campaign, but for several years, the industrial workers of the world, otherwise known as the IWW, has been leading a drive to organize Starbucks workers and the company has fought back. Rita Buck with us here tonight as well. We'll go to her in the field a little bit later. She's also a volunteer organizer for the IWW. Complains that Starbucks is not as socially responsible as management would like people to think, at least not when it comes to the treatment of employees. Only 42% of Starbucks employees have company-provided health insurance. That percentage is even lower than the 47% at Walmart, which has been widely criticized for years because of their compensation and benefits. Starbucks responds that over 90% of employees have health coverage from some source as a spouse or parent, and that, unlike most companies, it makes health insurance available to employees who work 20 hours a week. So in fact, Starbucks thought that it would be the first, Starbucks the first major company to offer health insurance to part-timers. In New York, its typical wage for baristas is $8.75 per hour, and the median currently is $7.76. The IWW typically focuses on direct action to build grassroots support for unionization. Pressure on companies come from tactics like internet campaigns and picketing in front of stores. According to Rita, the IWW played a substantial role in wage increases and better working conditions at Starbucks stores. Starbucks spokesman Rich Feller denies that the IWW made a difference. Feller says an employee survey found that workers want to earn more, and those results were the main reason for the pay increase that followed. And whether or not the employees need the union, Starbucks is legally required to avoid penalizing employees for the effort. In that regard, Starbucks has come under fire. The IWW claimed that in New York, the company fired three employees for supporting the union, gave other union supporters negative performance appraisals, and prohibited employees from wearing union pins. The National Labor Board found enough merit to the claims to schedule hearings. The company denies the charges. Now, Starbucks' defense grew more awkward when the email messages among managers became more public. Messages indicate that when some managers learned two pro-union employees had graduated from a labor program at Cornell University, they gathered the names of other graduates and checked them against the company lists to identify other employees who had been in the same program. Although the research itself is not necessarily legal, it raises some questions about how managers would use what they had learned. Or anyways. Oh, okay, you can cut it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a warm welcome for Rich Feller. From the Starbucks, three, uh, from Starbucks, or? From Starbucks, a representative from Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Shake it. Okay. No, no, we're not ready yet. We're not ready. I'll let you know when you can come in. I'll just, yeah, you're ready. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, have a warm welcome for our guest, Rich Feller from Starbucks. Hey, Rich. Hey, Nick. I nice see you again. Good to see you. Always, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. It's good to be here. It's great to see you. I, just some questions, you know, regarding Starbucks and the IWW and kind of the issue that we're having. How well do you think Starbucks is defending itself against the claims from the IWW? Well, up to this point, I mean, we've been completely honest and I've shared all the information that's available to us. We deny all charges against us. According to our records, this claim does not hold up. We respect the legal rights of our partners and employees and do not take any action or retaliate against partners who might be interested or take part in union activity. What about the employees who didn't feel like they were praised fairly? Um, well, I mean, all I can say about that is we feel our employees were praised fairly. Uh, that was an opinion of the managers of how the employees were working. Employees were fired for other reasons that we cannot discuss in public, and employees can wear anything as long as the clothing does not defy company policy. Now, Rich, is it true that 42% of the Starbucks employees get provided health care, and that's even opposed to the highly scrutinized Walmart at 47%? Well, Dick, that is true. Only 42% of our employees are provided health care, but 90% of health insurance from some source, whether it be from Starbucks or their spouse or their parent. And we offer health insurance for part-time employees, which is something you don't see very often. And then if the IWW were to succeed with organizing baristas at Starbucks, what changes would you expect in the way the company manages those workers? Well, to be honest, I mean, I think it would have a negative effect on our company as a whole. At Starbucks, we pride ourselves on employee and customer satisfaction. 
The bond between employer and employee is what makes us who we are. It's our strength. If the union becomes involved in this bond, the bond could be broken but to, and damaged to some extent. There would be less communication and interaction among employees and management, and this would damage our company's culture. Well, thanks, Rich. I really appreciate your responses. It's great to be here. Great, and now in response to that, we have a standstill in the field today with our, with our IWW representative, Rita Book. So let's turn to them. Thanks, Dick. This is a uh, standstill here, reporting in the field, and we're we're near one of the Starbucks locations, and one of the representatives of the IWW is here, uh, striking for labor rights for the baristas of Starbucks. And I'm here with Rita Book. Rita, what are some of the challenges might the IWW expect uh, from Starbucks? Well, some of the challenges that we may expect is that pressure from managers may dissuade employees from joining the union in the first place. As we have already mentioned, managers from New York have given given negative performance appraisals to employees who have been proven to be pro-union. At first, it may be hard for the IWW to convince employees that they have rights to join a union or even simply have curiosities about the unions. There's no need to fear any consequences. So that's a pretty aggressive campaign, Rita. How do you think Starbucks is defending itself? I actually don't think Starbucks need to defend itself from the IWW. We are trying to help Starbucks employees feel empowered and fully satisfied with their job, which in turn increases their productivity, customer satisfaction, and profitability. However, if Starbucks thinks they do need to defend themselves against the union, then they are acting a bit too defensive. For example, the IWW has found that in New York, Starbucks has fired three employees for supporting the union gave other supporters negative performance appraisals, and went as far as to prohibit employees from wearing simple union pins. There are even embarrassing emails circulating that when some managers learned two pro-union employees had graduated from labor unions at Cornell University, they went as far as to gather names from other graduates and check them against company lists to identify other employees who had been in the same program. Now, I don't know about you, but that looks like Starbucks is trying to hide some of their dirty laundry. So Rita, if the IWW were to succeed in organizing the baristas, how do you think management would take this? What would they have to change? Well, Stan, I think Starbucks would be facing more internal changes for the better. Customers would still be able to go into Starbucks and have the same experience as always, but on a more positive scale due to employees' increased satisfaction. The IWW would help empower Starbucks employees by allowing them to gain a voice on the job by joining together in negotiating contracts concerning wages and benefits. Healthcare would become more available to its employees. Maybe the reason why only 42% of employees have company provided insurance is because it is either too expensive or it doesn't offer enough coverage to its employees. Well, you heard it, folks. Starbucks makes the coffee and the baristas make beans. This is Stan Still Reporting live. Back to you, Dick. Well, thanks, Stan. Harsh words. Harsh words. How, how do you feel about that, Rich? Well, Dick, Starbucks represents the free choice of our partners and remains committed to complying fully with all laws governing the right to organize collectively. We are also confident that our progressive pro partner work environment, coupled with our outstanding compensation and benefits, makes unions unnecessary at Starbucks. Starbucks firmly believes that direct employee relationships, which we currently have with our partners, is the best way to help ensure a great work environment. We are confident that the Starbucks and its employees can come to an agreement without the aid of the union. We prefer to deal directly with them in a fair and respectful manner, just as if he had throughout history. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Rich tonight. We want to thank our reporter, Standstill, and our IWW representative, Rita Buck. We really appreciate everything. We provide the news, and you admire. Terry's Human Resource Management final has been canceled. All right. Uh, okay. Now let's turn to a short clip for the. Oh. <laughs> okay. Done. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a warm welcome for Rich Feller from the Starbucks Burrito. Oh, Wish I had a chair. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Shake it. Okay. No, no, we're not ready yet. 
and check them against company lists to identify. <laughs> well, there would be some challenges that the IWWW would expect. <laughs> <laughs>